What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back, back with part two in our series of creating an industrial building inside of Lumion. So um, in this part of the series, we're going to go through and we're going to add our furniture items as well as exporting our photorealistic rendering. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so now what I want to do with this space is I want to start adding some models in here because that image we created looked good, but the problem with the image that we created was that it feels really empty. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to start importing some different like office furniture and things like that. And so for this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in some desks and some chairs and things like that. So I'm just going to bring in a desk. I'm going to bring in an office chair. and you can hold the R key to adjust the direction that that's facing. And we're just gonna place this office chair at this table. Probably come in and add like a computer or something like that on this desk. So something like this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select these items and then we're going to hold the Alt key and we're just going to use the Move tool to create some copies. So we're going to add some different computers and some different desks in here. And the nice thing about this is if you want to, you can hold the Control key once you've done this and select all of these. And then we can just hold the Alt key again and make a copy of these a little further down the way. So I've got all of these selected and we'll go ahead and leave a gap in here. Um, so we've got these kind of in a row, but let's say we've got like a big long row of these desks and tables and things like that. Well now we can hold the control key and select all of these and then hold the alt key and make a copy of them across here as well. So. And there may be some things you want to do where you kind of like random randomize this or something like that. I don't really have time to do that right now just because this is going to be a quick rendering. Um, so we'll just have a bunch of these in here. And then probably what I'm going to do is add maybe some pieces of furniture and some other like entourage stuff along the wall right here. So I'm going to speed this up while I do this. And then we'll come back and take another look at what we're what we're doing. All right, so I think that's gonna get us pretty close. There's probably some things I'm gonna clean up, but we'll go ahead and call it good for right now. Obviously, you would want a little more, um, you would want a little more diversity in what's in here, but with just my amount of time, I figured I'd go ahead and just populate the model like this. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna export a rendering just to see kind of what this can look like. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna just gonna make a few adjustments. So I'm gonna build on top of my uh, realistic shadows settings that I've done before. And this is one thing I would really recommend for all of you is to find some stuff that you like and then um, kind of build off of that for your different things. So like for example, this one I created before there were really real skies in the older version of Lumion. So what you can do is you can come in here and build on top of that and you can bring in real skies to create different views and different things like that. So you can see how that real sky really does a great job of um, casting some realistic sunlight in here. So you, you can go through these different real skies and uh, kind of adjust them and see what kind of a look you can get inside of your renderings. So like for example, if you want a little bit more of like a red, you can select one of the morning real skies or if you want a little bit brighter daytime light, you can select one of the uh, you can select one of the clear skies over here. It just kind of depends on the kind of lighting that you want to create. So go ahead and play around with that a little bit and uh, kind of see what you can create and also play around with your camera angles and things like your uh, focal length. So you can see how a wider focal length is going to fit more in your scene, but it's also a little less interesting. So if you zoom in a little bit more, um, you're not necessarily going to fit as much in, but it may give you a little bit more of an interesting look in here. The other 
other thing I want to try to do, and I haven't actually messed around with this too much, so we'll see if we can do it, is I want to see if I can create some volumetric sunlight, and yep, we definitely can. So what I want is I want some beams of light coming through my windows in here a little bit. So we're almost gonna make it kind of foggy looking so that you can actually see the light coming through. And you do need to be a little bit careful when you do this because you want those light beams to come through but you don't necessarily want them to block like your background or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and test this like this and just kind of see what this image is going to look like. So I'm just gonna do a test three hit the enter key and we're gonna go ahead and render this out and the one thing I don't like about this volumetric sunlight is it's like right in the foreground of my image right it's like blocking what this space looks like and so I want to bring it in and have it create some beams of light a little further back in my image so I'm just gonna adjust the range I don't want it right here because you can see how that really kind of blocks your view of the rest of your scene so the other thing that we might want to do is we might want to come in here in our effects and add some reflection planes. So we just want to edit our reflection plane and add and just uh, add a reflection plane to your actual glass of your windows. So you can see how we want to add that for this plane as well as this one. That'll get us some more realistic reflections of our interior. And so let's do another render and see what this looks like. I'm a little concerned. We may want to turn that uh, volumetric sunlight off, but we'll go ahead and create a test four and kind of see what this looks like. So you could definitely keep that if you wanted to. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that off just cause it's blocking the view of the mountains on the outside and things like that. So I'm gonna turn off my volumetric sunlight. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some trees outside the window so you don't have this big open space out here. And so we're gonna go ahead and export our rendering and we'll call this our final render. Um, you might wanna think about adding some interior lights or something like that inside of this space, but overall I'm fairly happy with the way that this image looks. So we'll go ahead and we'll create our final render and we'll just call this final render industrial space and hit the save key. And you can see how this gives us a really good result with our lighting and everything else. Like I said, there are some things you could kind of mess around with if you wanted to, but overall, I feel like this gave us a really good rendering for the amount of effort that we put into it. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Is this a workflow that you find useful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.